And we are live. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody from the Soul Collective. How are you? This is the lovely Jake Golding. He's come to join me today for some mini wall reads. I'm the approved reader today, and he's our guest speaker. Feel free to say hello once you join in the chat. And if you haven't all already, please approve yourself access to StreamYard so that we can actually see your name in the chat. Otherwise, we're just going to get Facebook user. And having Facebook user, hey, Tina, is going to make it really hard for us to be able to distinguish who's actually commenting. I do have my tablet next to me so that I can see anyone who doesn't access StreamYard. But it would be a lot easier for both of us if you could give permission to StreamYard. And with that, Jake, tell us something about your stuff. Tell us about your business. Tell us about what you do and why you're here. Uh, well, uh, I am a self-proclaimed warlock, healer and psychic intuitive. And I've been working my craft, I think, since I was about 12. Well, I sort of began when I was 12, um, but it's always been within me. Um, I read professionally, um, but I'm also, I'm also a support worker. So I work in care and disability as well. So I like the balance. Um, and everyone knows I'm a spook. <laughs> um, well, you can tell I'm that not... just by looking at you spook. <laughs> um, I, yeah, I read professionally. I'm a Reiki healer, but I also add a little bit of zing to my healings as well. Um, I perform house blessings, cleansings, um, prepare personal charms and amulets for people. Would you like to go into detail a little bit more about your house blessings? Because that's actually very interesting. And I'm sure a lot of people on the Soul Collective would love to know how that works. Oh, absolutely. Like, I'm a big believer that anyone can cleanse their own home. But, you know, sometimes they just need someone else to come in and do it for them. Um, absolutely. Brooke, we'll put you on the list. Continue. Every um, every cleansing that I do is different, and I believe that I've sort of perfected my well, perfecting um, as much as I can my um, rituals that I do for the house. Um, and you know, so I how do your like, rituals work in the cleansing of the house? Like, what what tools do you use and stuff like that? Like, what well, what see, equipment it, do you it bring? It depends. It depends. But most of the time, it's just my basics: candles, incense, um, prayer, uh, sound. Uh, hi karen hi karen <laughs> uh but yeah no, absolutely yeah no so basically um the the ritual that i've sort of perfected is all based around the uh the greek pantheon uh i honor hestia the goddess of the home and the hearth um i'm a big believer of honoring the spirits of the house um, because I don't think a lot of people, you know, realize because I'm a big believer that everything contains a spirit. doesn't matter what it is. Um, but by yep, honoring, yep. Not I completely agree with that because all of the energy that people put into even building the house gives it its own life essence. Everything oh. has a flow of energy. And especially when you're putting electrical conduits and wires through the house, that gives it its own life as well, which allows as for you, as you'd be aware for things just to come in and make the home theirs. Oh, absolutely. And I recently um, performed a cleansing on someone that was still sort of building their house. I mean, the house was built, but there was still some unfinished stuff. And, you know, you could just really feel that the the whole place was still unsettled. It was still on heightened. Uh, so, yeah. you know, and there was a lot of stuff sort of going on. But it turned out really that one of the spirits was just a family member checking up on them. But I could also feel that the energy was sort of a little bit unbalanced. So go in there and make some offerings to the spirits, bring food. Hi, Alex. Hi, Alex. Welcome. I can't actually see you. Alex. Just on my phone. That's okay. Alex is actually our first read for the night when we get into this. And I'm going to ask questions for another couple more minutes before we get into our readings. Yeah, no, but continue right. with what you were saying. Um, yeah, no, I believe that, you know, I'm, I love to bring food and offerings, flowers for the spirits. Um, you know, and one of the things that I do is I, I open the doorway to the spirit so that I enter the house on a spiritual level. Um, and I always like to have that extra person with me. So maybe just the homeowner. I don't like big crowds because people's energies and all that sort of thing. So it's just usually two of us. Open the way to the spirits, uh, you know, say prayers, uh, make offerings. Can, can you explain why the energy of a lot of people can have a hindrance and effect on house cleansings and stuff like that 
so everyone here can get a better understanding of that there's, sometimes there's a lot of people that are like a lot of people feed into fear a lot um and even though they're excited some people like feed into the fear of the unknown um so you know if the people aren't really sort of grounded in their in a spiritual sense they sort of if anything happens they sort of give into the fear so that feeds the energy of whatever's going on and you know i'm not here to sort of give into the fear i'm here to sort of bring in that light and bring in that energy and and bring in that balance that symbiotic relationship between family hearth home and energy absolutely and look other people's intentions can affect the work that i do as well you know like so i prefer those people to be you know outside or you know go and go for a walk or do whatever so that i can do my work and you know get things sorted instead of worrying about other people and you know because there's a lot of people that get they sort of like if something happens like say if a candle goes out or a flame goes out they go oh my gosh and it's like I have and then to that fear and energy can actually yeah. feed that entity that you're trying to get rid of because oh, if yeah. they're going <gasps> then that gives that so energy like, more power you know <laughs> yeah so sometimes it can be oh you know because the audience they, they just sort of yeah so it just disturbs the energy and it's a real sacred thing and if if you don't um acknowledge it as a sacred thing it just dispels the whole thing so you know respect what i'm doing and it'll get the job done you know like yeah because you know. energy comes from accepting the energy that you use from what i believe in so if you're going in there to do a job and they don't believe it's going to get done then it's not going to get done because their energy is the one disbelieving everything that you're actually trying to do energy i believe has the ability to counteract exactly what other energy is trying to do because it's always that symbiotic relationship yeah and you'll find that there are some people that just want to sort of feed into the hysteria and the hype of it um so generally the people want the house to be haunted so or they want something to happen so you know what's the point Well to be fair a haunted house does make for a fun home especially when you like to communicate with them being oh, in the woods I have I'm many visitors the, I'm talking about the people that sort of like get really you know overly scared and they're texting you at 12 o'clock at night saying oh my gosh this happened it's like seriously you know like I've gone it's in there fine. And, yeah, absolutely <laughs> but, so let's go on to now your reading style. Tell us a little bit about that. And then once we've gone into that, we'll get straight into our readings and we'll be starting with Alex. All right. Awesome. So I um, predominantly work with the cards. I work with the Oracle and the Tarot. Tarot was one of the first um, tools that I learned to work with. Um, I'm, I like to describe myself as an energy reader. So I'm very much you know, feel things through my body, emotions. Um, that's, that's very much how I feel when I get my readings. It's, it's not like I'm really being spoken to or anything. It's just yeah. I get this energy, this feeling, this vibe. Sometimes I get a word, sometimes I get a picture. It's, it's not really anything that can be explained. Yeah, we'll see. Like sometimes I'll have like, like there'll be a voice that comes through. It's like in my head that's sort of like, or I'll see. Sometimes I do see energy. Uh, I do have the ability to perform mediumship, but I don't advertise myself as a medium because I can't promise anything because, but gee whiz, sometimes I freak the crap out of myself with some of the stuff that I pick up on, but can't promise anything. So I'm basically, yeah, I'm, I'm an intuitive energy reader and I utilize the cards to help me to um, make yeah. sense. And what energy. brought you to using the cards as your core thing? And once we've answered this question, we're going to get straight into our readings for yeah. the day. Well, when I was young, I had three different psychics tell me that I had a gift and I was intuitive. Um, and one of them said that the tarot would be very, um, one of the tools that I'd be really good with. Um, but I'd also been into a, um, a metaphysical shop and I'd seen the images of the cards, the Rider Waite, which is actually one of the first decks that I worked with, um, that I began to read with. And I was just captivated by the cards. And I like the cards because it's something to handle and it's something physical. And a lot of people like that. A lot of people It like helps that. you ground yourself as well. And it yeah. really helps reconfirm the messages that you are receiving. At least that's what I feel. Absolutely. Absolutely. I can be picking up on something and turn over and go, oh, okay, that makes sense, you know. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, Becky, I've put you on the list as well. And with that, we're going to get started. So I'll let you get started, Jake, while I adjust this list. And we'll be reading for Alex first. Okie dokie. 
Alex, 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 what are we going to read for you, Alex? I reckon, Alex, I want to read the Oracle. I've got two decks here tonight, so I'm just going to pick whichever one I'm drawn to for that purpose. So I'm going to shuffle the cards. We're working with The Goddess and Sirens by Stacey DeMarco. This is my um, go-to Oracle deck, so I will give it a shuffle and we'll see. Oh, yep, yeah, there we go. Oh, two guys, uh, my Facebook page is The Aussie Warlock. If you would like to go and check that out, that's The Aussie Warlock. You're we'll sure attach a link at the end of this live for <laughs> everybody as well. Yeah, uh, and I'm also The Australian Warlock on Instagram, so if you want to go check that out as well. Okay, so do you want me to start or? Absolutely, let's go. Alex is ready and waiting for us. All right, Alex, Alex, you have the gorgeous... Quetesh, okay? So, Alex, I'll just give... I'll let you have a quick look at the cards so that you can take in the um, the artwork. The artworks in the, on these cards are stunning. So, this is all about reclaiming your pleasure, right? So, whenever I see this card, this is a message for us to find ways to unblock tension, um, to release anything that we, we're sort of carrying around with us, you know, I think I really feel when I look at this card, this is very much a message for you to practice a little bit more, you know, gratitude um, and, you know. Definitely getting that from the two cards that I've drawn. I've drawn two swords, which is the Queen of Swords and the Four of Swords, which is the truth and letting go of things. Coming to a complete foundational shift, essentially, is what I'm getting a feeling of, which is very much going with what you're saying. So I'm going to let you continue. Yeah, fabulous. Um, so, you know, I really feel that, you know, learning to do a bit of like self-care and stuff because I kind of feel that you might feel a little bit like blocked or a little bit stuck, you know, just internally. Um, so I feel that, you know, learning to relax a little bit and do something fun, you know, don't be afraid to, you know, go out and um, have a have something. Don't be there. afraid to say what you need to say as well. Like you yeah. are your own queen and being, being, the, being marked by the queen of swords, it's very much showing me that you've got that superiority and what you need to do now, you know where you want to go in life. You're standing tall and you're standing proud. The queen can be a little cold, but you know what? With everything that I know, because Alex is actually a very good friend of mine, everything that you have been through, you have every right to stand as tall as you are right now and as proud as you are. You have definitely earned this. And being yeah, marked by the Four of Swords is definitely showing you that you've finally put all of that effort in. You've reclaimed your agenda. You've finally fallen at truce within yourself and your own energy. Oh, I know you can, okay. hun. You are very blunt and to the point. Alex is actually one of my oldest clients, and I wouldn't be here if it was not here for her sister and herself. They really excelled and pushed me to be where I am now. There you go. And look, I really feel too that at the moment what is really important for you is to really work on your your self-confidence and reclaiming your personal power. I think that's really important. And I think by giving yourself permission to enjoy life, enjoy the body you're in, enjoy the pleasures of life, you know, it'll take that weight off. Don't feel guilty for enjoying yourself, okay? Right? That's you have absolutely earned the right to enjoy yourself. So with that, I hope that that's resonated with you, hun. Spirit and energy is literally just speaking up, saying, be true to yourself. You are finally in a point in your life where you can do what you want when you want. You are happy, you are free, and you are in control. The swords are all about control. And cutting the bullshit. <laughs> Literally cutting through it. It's straight to the yeah. point. <laughs> no messing about. Brilliant. So with that now, we're going to move on to Ben Fletcher, and I'm going to put these timestamps in, so I'll let you start again, and that way I can stay on top of the books for the live right. when we come to the end. I'm going to pick the tarot for you today. Uh, this is my vampire tarot. I absolutely adore the artwork on these cards. It's beautiful, dark. I'm going with the angel cards this time. Let's make a swap. <laughs> Let's balance it out. <laughs> All right. So it's Ben, is it, Ben? Okay. Yep, Ben Fletcher. All right, Ben, you had a card jump out. You have the five of grails, my lovely, Okay. So this, this is, I'll just let you have a look at the image there, right? So we've got this, like, this mermaid here that's kind of a little bit upset. 
you know. Um, and, you know, usually when the Five of Grails appears in a reading, you know, there's a lot of this, this, there's a heavy heart that we've got or, you know, we've experienced something, whether it be now or in the past, um, that's really sort of affected us. Sometimes this can be depression. Sometimes it can be our anxiety, um, you know. Five of Grails really encourages you to really embrace your emotions, really express anything that's sort of been, you know, you've been holding on to or been needing to express. I, 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 I'm definitely in agreement with you because the angels are giving me the heart chakra card, which and it was reversed, which is actually showing me that your heart is very heavy, like you have a lot of stress in your life and that you need to release. And I also, because I always draw two cards for my reads just to help me get a better understanding. The angels have also given me notice the signs as well. Like, you know that these things that we're talking about are resonating within you. I very much get this sense of, you know, that you've got a very heavy heart. You're very sad. It's, I feel like this is definitely, definitely something from the past. It's not something recent. It's just something that you really, really hold on to. Sorry, I was just checking who that Facebook user was. But yes, so the heart the heart chakra is when the angels bring out the heart chakra, it shows that the angels are there to help but like unburden this load. So if you just rely on the people around you and look for the signs, they keep giving it to you. They keep showing you the things that you're after. They keep showing you what you need to do. You know you want to heal and they are definitely wanting to try and assist you in healing. I'll let you continue, Jake. Um, and like, you know, with the five of growls, you know, it's really shit, you know, life is shit. We experience, we feel miserable, you know, we have experiences that real, like life can be shit. <laughs> Sorry for me. Most Literally. <laughs> um, but you know, this is, and like I was saying before, you know, don't be afraid to express your emotions, but don't allow them to rule. You can't be sitting because there's a beautiful saying, if you, if you sit in shit long enough, it stops smelling. So kind of need to get up out of it and not you know allow yourself to sit in there right so you know if there's and allow your cup to overflow the five of cups are constantly pouring constantly yeah, like the five absolutely. of grails so it's always going to be there but you've just got to you have to begin that healing process and start try even if it's just one positive thought or doing something different for yourself amazing okay amazing so well that's on that really let's amazing. draw one of my motivational manifesto cards i absolutely love these cards because they're quite the quite the quite the motivation in all honesty that's why they're called the motivational manifestos and they're by brendan Bu brendan bucard i absolutely love it this this deck was also a gift as well and they're not really an oracle card or a tarot card they're just affirmations so let's see what we've got for you all right, so the motivational manifesto for you is we do not need to await more resources. We need to act and we will find abundance comes to us. Fabulous. So with that, we're going to now move on to our next read for the day. I hope that that resonated with you, Ben Fleck. And then we're going to move on to Natalia. Natalia, if you're there, let us know. If not, I'm going to tag you into the comments now. And then I'll put your timestamp in as well. So I'll let you start with this again while I get everything done over here in the books. Yeah, sure. So who are we and this is So we're reading for Natalia. Natalia, Natalia. Hello, Natalia. How are you doing, my lovely? Um, Natalia, Natalia. I reckon she's a goddess and sirens, I reckon. Oh, absolutely. She's just got a beautiful energy. Natalia, Natalia, Natalia. Goddesses, reveal to me what Natalia needs to know. What does she need to know, my lovelies? What does she need to know? What does she need to know? There we go. All right. Okay. So, my lovely, you have the goddess Persephone. And I've just blown out my candle with my own breath saying that. Okie dokie. <laughs> so, I, I honestly feel that something probably needs to end in your life. I think there needs to be some form of ending so that you can step forward, um, whether that be old habits, you know, 
needing to declutter or something. Something needs to end so that you can step forward, okay? Anyway, so Persephone is the goddess of cycles, rhythms. You know, she was she was originally a spring goddess, um, and then she was taken into the underworld where she had to learn to adapt. And, you know, long story short, she sort of moves back and forth throughout the year between the underworld and the upper world as well. So this card is all about adjustment and cycles, you know. You know, uh, and I, I can definitely agree with that because the card that I've drawn is the Seven of Cups reversed and it's very much showing us, like you are saying before, things need to end. The Seven of Cups to me, when my interpretation with this beautiful card here, I'll show you as all, is just this, the thoughts of illusions, that you're at this point in your life where you've got to let go of the reality, like you've got to let go of the fantasy and start grasping the reality. Seven of Cups shows that you're constantly trying to fill up your cup, whether it be from somebody else's cup or you're trying to drink out of somebody else's cup. You're trying to constantly just have all of these things in your life. But because the Seven of Cups are a very fluid energy, you've got to grasp it. And when it's reversed, it's stating and showing, because it's also marked with the Queen of Pentacles reversed as well, that you have to let go of your emotions in this point in time. And you have to, I feel, I don't know if this is resonating with you as well, Jake, but I feel like that you really need to ground yourself in the perception of what is real right now and then move forward with that instead of trying to ground yourself on the fantasy of what you would like to come out of the situation. You really need to just grasp it with both hands and fill your cup from your own glass and not somebody else's. See your own life through your own emotions and dictate your choices through logic. Yeah. See, and like I agree with the grounding aspect because I think Persephone really encourages us to really go there um, and learn to listen to our body and our own cycles and, you know, ask yourself what you feel that you need. Like, for instance, it, it's an example. So if you're feeling exhausted, right, and you want to lay down, and but in the back of your mind you're like, I've got to do this, I've got to do that or whatever, Persephone is very much about listening to your body. Obviously your body wants to settle down and just have a rest. So really listen to that and attune to your natural rhythm. Um, this is also about naturally listening to your instincts as well. So, you know, pay attention to when something feels off and don't ignore it. Trust yourself. Attune yourself to your natural rhythms, okay? And you'll be able to, you know, understand things and confront things a little bit better and not feel so lost. And you'll stand on a much stronger grounding as well. Because you'll be able to grow with it. Because when you understand your own personal rhythms, the Queen of Pentacles turns into a beautiful, abundant crop and field of great wealth, prosperity. Which is very much just a signifying signification of great inner beauty and just a new start of everything. Perfect perfection. Yeah, yeah. How many cards do you just have the one card or is there two? I always draw two. Oh, so who do you have the Queen of Pentacles? So I reckon the Queen of Pentacles is the Queen of Pentacles. Yes. Well, so the Queen of Pentacles is Persephone's um, spring aspect, and this is her underworld aspect. So maybe you might like to uh, um, work with the goddess Persephone, and she'll help you to attune to, you know, your natural cycles and help you. Would you have a meditation that would help connect with Persephone? Because you do find Um, yourself very strongly grounded in the Greek pantheon. I reckon one of the things that is best, I think, do a lot of research on that specific deity, do as much research, light a candle that corresponds to that particular, um, that goddess, sit and listen and allow her to speak through you. That's all I'm going to give because that's how the goddesses speak through us. They speak through our own innate intuitive abilities and allow that to come through, you know. So maybe by listening to yourself, she'll teach you. You'll find that. She'll come out. Yeah. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. So with absolutely, and if there is one thing that I can ses- suggest, as you're saying, she is a spring goddess, and I find myself quite tied into the juridic practices and stuff like that. Candles of light greens and light blues will definitely help you connect to spring entities. Yeah. Well, and see, like I think, um, you know, purple is that fantastic color because it's like, you know, they're. It's all be- about spirit. <laughs> To trust, trust your, you know, your psychic abilities and your natural gifts and innate wisdom and all that sort of thing. And yeah, I think it's a balance between the light and the green. So she's got the underworld energy, but also the springtime. I don't know, just a, just a thought. (laughs) (laughs) 
But yeah, so with that, I hope that that's resonated with you, Natalia. And then we're going to move on to Kelly, Kelly, Kelly Mikola. Please correct me if I've pronounced your name wrong, but I'll let you start while I go tag Kelly in over here in the chats and get everything done, put a timestamp in. But And I'm definitely being drawn to the angel cards for this one. Kelly, you have the daughter of Scepter's girlfriend. You're a fiery queen, or you need to be if you're not, okay? So the queen of Scepter's brings through this fiery energy and she illuminates the, the way. She goes for what she wants. So if that is you, awesome. But if that's not you, I think you might need to embrace the queen of Scepter. I mean, the daughter of Scepter's a little bit. She embodies the essence of the fire card. So... She is here and she's like, no one's going to mess with me. No one's going to duck with me. I'm going to say duck. You're not going to believe me, but if I just I just drew the same two cards from my last angels, the heart chakra and notice the signs. You definitely need to embrace your own power. Your heart is blowing full of energy. This is definitely what I'm getting. So I'm definitely, definitely in agreement with you, Jake. Like, it's just beautiful. You need to embrace your power. Be that queen of scepters. Your heart chakra is you know, so someone- overflowing. Yeah, like sometimes the daughter of Scepters can be a little bit stubborn too. So she refuses help from other people. And I think in honour to honour yourself, you have to sort of let that wall down too and not, you know, try to do it. And you have to notice the signs when people are trying to help you because you can be very stubborn. You're not not even paying attention I'm getting with the angels sometimes. You're just like, no, I know what I need to do, which can, can be blinding sometimes. Because, like, you can see it's like it's, she's holding this, the, the ace of scepters in her hands and she's like, no, mine, no touchy, you know, like, it's like, mm-hmm. you know, don't be afraid to sort of let loose a little bit, you know, you just take that weight off your shoulders a little bit, but, you know, embrace the fire within you, you know, you have this incredible fire and there's potential in there, so, you know, channel that. I, I'm definitely getting drawn to pull a runestone as well, so continue. Yeah, like, definitely, um you know, feel, feel that, embrace that, uh, you know, sort of don't worry about any sort of past experiences that are stopping you from moving forward. Uh, but yeah, no, that, that's all I'm going to say. Cause that's all I, that's all I feel. Yeah, and the, the rune that I drew is actually in complete correlation with what you just said. It's the rune of separations retreat. It's Othila. It's the inheritance rune. It's this time. It's the time that you're separating your paths in life. Your old yeah. skins need to be shed and your relationships that you did once really hold on to, you need to discard sometimes. And it's all for the benefit of yourself. You're finally holding on to the things that you really want and you're starting to make that, those steps forward. So having the rune of separation, if you just focus on the things that you know that you need to do, you are going to be fine. You've got all of the power. Your heart is overflowing. There are signs everywhere and pay attention to them and let go of the things that do not bode you well anymore. There are uh, quite a few things that I feel like that are holding on to you with claws that you just need to break free and separate from. So feel free to correlate and correct us if we're wrong at all, but this is very much the vibes and the energy that I'm getting through. Ah. So she's recently just cut some very heavy cords. All right. I, I, I'm, I'm being compelled to draw a card to find out how this is going to benefit her. I don't know if you are, but I, I definitely am. Yeah. And I just got the lovely Queen of Pentacles. Those cords that you have just cut are going to grow into great fruition for you, and everything's going to start working itself out. You just need to stay strong. Yeah, you don't you don't need those sort of people in your life, you know. Sometimes they can be quite um, heavy, and I think because you're such a strong personality, I think it's important that you you surround yourself with people that feed your fire. If it's people, that's just that's just my, my exactly. Thought. And if feeding your fire is going to the woods as well, do that because people's energy feeding can happen in many many different aspects. I myself cannot name? surround myself with people. You are what both amazing. Oh, that's lovely. So the last five comments are actually from Kelly. Ah. Oh. So I the Facebook user commenting right now is Kelly. Yeah. 
But with that, I really hope that that's resonated with you, love. Oh, so that's her as well. Everything sure. will get better for you. Yeah. Just have faith. Look for signs. They're everywhere. And there is abundance coming your way. And sometimes, sometimes you just need to take those. So you've already taken the steps to cut and sever. So you know, now you need the time to breathe and heal. Take the steps that you need to do, girlfriend. So with that now, we're going to move on to Judith. And Judith. I will tag Judith in and let you start. Judith, 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 okie dokie, Judith. I'm kind of jumping back and forth between the cars. So I think Judith is, is a goddess girl. Judith. All right. So your cards jumped over. All right. I'm excited. So actually, I'm going to wait till you start. I'm not, I haven't looked at my card. So I'm just, you do yours. And like, yep, I'm yep. Like, All right. Oh. I'll, I'll get that. <laughs> so I've just tagged her in. Judith, your timestamp is 30 minutes and 40 seconds if you do miss this live. But the cards that I've gotten for you, and I'm actually getting pulled to grab one of my chakra stones as well, which is the brow chakra or the third eye, which is an amethyst. And the six of wands is what I've drawn with that. This card here shows me that there's this burden. Like, well, it's not really burden. I don't feel like it's a burden at all. The six of wands is showing somebody very strong, very impetuous, somebody that's very smart, very quick-witted. It's a very strong card with the wheel of fire. As you can see in this image here, we have a knight riding on a horse, striving forwards with great strength and integrity, and then on its back is a crow. So everything that you've been speaking to, everything that you've been trying to discuss and everything that you're trying to work on at the moment, so long as you hold your thoughts, your prayers, and your actions of fire, you will stand strong and impetuous. But you've got to allow for some messages to come through, which is why I'm definitely getting drawn to the third eye, is you've got a lot of messages coming through because I feel like you're also very much starting to connect with spirit. Amethyst is a very strong stone, a spiritual connection, and being drawn to pull it from the third eye as well shows me that I feel like your third eye is opening. So feel free to jump in now. Yeah, no, and absolutely. So let's see what you have drawn. It's funny that you're saying that because we have the muses, right? I'll put the card up so that you can have a look now. When this card appears, I ask people to be open to inspiration. If you're feeling a little bit flat or if you feel that things aren't running how you want them to run, allow yourself to quiet your mind and be open to the inspiration that is around you. That, ha that is how spirit communicates with us. It can be through your mind, your thoughts. It can be your heart. And remember, it's never negative. So don't listen to that ego bullshit or whatever goes on that says you're not good enough all that sort of thing. We don't need – that ain't what we're talking about, right? Tell it to go get – This stuff. is definitely not what we're after. You're, you're strong and you're powerful and you need to have more faith in yourself. Allow yourself to be open to the inspirations of the muses. The muses are the, the, the divine inspirers. So, you know, be open to things and, you know – the way you express and find it, your your life purpose is definitely on its way as well. So I just drew an angel card to continue on with what you're saying, and the angels gave me the life purpose. You're opening yourself up to all of these possibilities to have the life that you've always dreamed of. They're giving you your life purpose. The angels are literally guiding you down the path. You've just got to you've got to you got to take notes. I'm definitely getting from this here. If you look at it, take notes. Stop striving so hard and stop trying to make everything happen. Your life purpose is always going to be there. So start taking notes. Let the muses jump in and show you things. Take notes. Definitely, I'm definitely feeling if you don't have a journal, potentially buy one and start writing it down. Um, me and yourself in our craft, I believe that you've got a grimoire as well or a book of shadows, whatever you do per, per se to call it. And these are great spiritual tools for those who are opening themselves up to this. It's where you can write all of your notes, your craft rituals, your readings, and your translations from the cards and the decks that you own yourself, if you've got any. Absolutely. You know, like, we won't, we won't be led there unless we take those steps. So allow yourself to follow your inspiration and follow your heart. I, one of the best things that I recommend people is to go with what you love to do and allow that to guide you, you know, because that will take you where you need to be. Trust your heart, you know. And when I say trust your heart, I don't mean like your emotions. I mean your, your just your love 
for life because sometimes the emotions can affect us. So really trust that divine inspiration that comes through and allow yourself to sort of be guided. And yeah, that's how, you know, things will open up for you. And it's just going to open up gradually. So don't try to force it. The muses are there to give you the inspiration. I feel when you need the inspiration, you can't always grab everything at once. You can't be greedy. And that, that's why I feel like this, there is a very strong resonance to a journal. I keep being told, journal this, journal, write it down, write it down. Yeah, so with that, I hope that that's resonated with you, Judith. And then we'll move on to our next, which is for Brooke Amber. Uh, if anyone else would like to get onto our list, we're going to be reading for an hour. And there's two positions left because we've got 10 spots available today. So if you'd like to get involved, just let us know and we'll be grabbing your name straight out of the live. So with that, I'm going to tag Brooke Amber in and I'll let you start with this again. Brooke. Brooke. Absolutely, Tina, I'll put you on. Brooke, 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 Brooke. Uh, I think Brooke, oh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter which one. You did, Karen. You are next. Which one? They both want you, Brooke. They both want you. <laughs> well, then grab them all out. <laughs> All right. All right, Brooke, your reading starts at 36.10. Okie dokie, la di da di da. Let's pull these two together. Whoopsie daisies. I'm just going to chime my bell. Okie dokie. All right. So, Brooke, is that Brooke? Yep, so it's Brooke. Brooke, I honestly, I'll, I'll show you the cards in a minute, but I, on like, looking at the cards, I really feel... You're on the list, Lee. I really feel that you need to sort of prioritise yourself a little bit more and sort of clear out any mental fog. I think it's really important that you do that um, because I feel in, in order for you to step forward on your journey, I really think that you just need to... If you're going to do something, do it. Don't procrastinate. Don't overthink it. Just do it. Um, you know, I think sometimes you may tend to overthink a little bit, maybe. Um, so I think that affects yourself, but I think once you get your mindset on something, I think that'll help you to boost your forward. Don't allow the past mistakes or past energy to affect you and bring that energy in. Give yourself, Thank you, Wendy. Give yourself permission to, you know, enjoy uh, you know, enjoy, enjoy whatever you choose to do. Um, don't ever think to things too much. and Don't be so hard on yourself. If you want to do something, do it, you know, that's what absolutely. Cause I've just gotten the angel card of perfect timing. You, you're in the perfect timing to live your life. As the angels say, now is the perfect moment for you to act on your inspiration. The doors are wide open while you walk through them with us by your side. Don't delay. Don't procrastinate as of all the ingredients are right for your success right now. Spring is on its way and everything and everyone is on your side, supporting your positive outcome. Everybody has your back. So you've got, and that's fantastic because it's mentioned procrastination too, which is what I said as well. Um, so, you know, you have the judgment card and that is the last card before the world. So this is, you're sort of at that, probably at that point in life. Precipice. Too where you're you know you're it's sort of unfortunately like, melanie we're all out but if you want to be on our next lives just let me know it's like at the end of the movie when they're finalizing thing they just had that big event and now they're just sort of finalizing everything before the next step that's sort of where you are and so that's sort of where you're thinking where your mind's at so it's very much about you know not procrastinating taking everything that you've experienced and learned from and you know take those next steps cut out what you need to cut out don't second guess it, you'll be good, okay? Absolutely. And so I've also got the page of cups as well. Let okay. new people in your life. So don't hold back because of fear of what has happened. The pages are messengers in, in what I believe. And they're always coming through. And being the page of cups, it means your cup is starting to fill up and you are going to be happy again. You need to literally, as, as, as Jake is saying, take that leap of faith. Be as the fool.
pages are really like, especially the page of cups, they're so sensitive to. And sometimes they are. They, and yep, continue. Because, like, being a Pisces, like, I spend half the time. What's your star sign, love, if you're there? Are you there? You're part. What's your star sign? I'd love to know. But, like, the daydreamer is like, the Page of Cups is the epitome of the Pisces child, the daydreamer, you know, la di da, but so artistic, so creative and awesome and love loving people, but spend so much time in their head. Absolutely. And they're always drinking as well. They're drinking to make themselves happier because they live in a world of fantasy. And I don't mean this to be rude at all, but it's often said about the Pisceans is they're in a dream world. Honey, we're gorgeous. We don't care what you say about us. <laughs> <laughs> Look, us Capricorns are very stubborn and very grounded in reality. And you know what? Could be farther from the truth because it's absolutely damn right. It is the truth. <laughs> I am so grounded and so stubborn, just like a goat. Well, I see. I've got, I've got um, Pisces sun, then Scorpio moon. So that just explains why I'm so bloody sensitive. All My time. moon is in Gemini, which means cool. I feel like that's why I'm able to communicate with absolutely everybody. And then my rising is actually as a Sagittarius, which is why I am so. I feel like straight to the point. You could say. Yeah. Well, see, I'm Sag rising as well, so we have that in common. Oh, we do. No wonder why we're very striving for exactly what we want and we know ourselves and we know what we need to do. So with that, I hope that that's resonated. <laughs> so Tina's saying she's a Pisces and she likes her dream world as well. Oh, there you go. Yeah, we love our dream world. All right. So to now get, you have to get out of it. Sometimes. It's called Blunt, as Karen says. And guess what, Karen? It's now turned for your reading. And I'll let you start <laughs> again while I put the timestamp in. So let's be blunt, Jake. <laughs> oh, so we have to be blunt, do we? No, 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 we don't. We don't. I was just making a joke. I was making a joke. <laughs> oh, don't tempt me. All right. So Karen, 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 Karen. Um, Karen. I reckon, I reckon Karen would like her. I reckon she's a vampire girl. Mm, yes, bring out those vampire fledglings. Okie dokie. So lovely. You have the eight. Hi, honey. Blood. Karen does not mind blunt. So you know what? Let's be blunt for Karen's sake. So Karen, so look, look at this card. So whenever I see this card, um, this is all about sort of walking away. It's sort of, you know, the eight of growls comes where we need to really sort of go inside of ourselves and really like, do that self analysis um, and really ask ourselves the big questions. Don't be afraid to go there and explore um, what you need to explore. Absolutely. So I, yeah. I resonate with that completely because I've actually drawn the Wheel of Fortune and the Ace of Cups. Literally jump into the heart of things. You're clearing the fog and the haze. Stop procrastinating. Fate is in your control. Because, you know, you, you, most of the time when the Eight of Grails comes up, we're sort of in that little bit of a limbo, so to speak. It's sort of like we're not sure, we, we're debating. Sometimes in relationships we're sort of pondering that, you know, we want to leave the partner, but at the same time we're not sure. So this is where we sort of need to just stop and don't... I'd love to fit you in, Nikki, right? but we're full, unfortunately, today. Sending love to everyone. Um, you know, sometimes we, we need to step away in order to think, you know, we need to do our own self-analysis and really sort of get straight to the point. So don't be afraid to go there. Don't be afraid to, you know, just just move away from so that you can just clear your head a little bit. But don't allow yourself to get And caught having up. the Ace of Wands is definitely showing you that you've got the clarity coming because the Ace of Wands shows the wheels of fire and the actions to be able to see through the cloud and the haze and the things that blind us. It's also the representation of a new star. So it's showing that you are in limbo and I'm definitely getting that as well, very much in agreement with you, but you have the ability to be able to see through it. You have the ability to drive right through it because you've got the wheel of fire and the fire is just starting. The ones are very creative as well and they're full of intuition and ability and power. So having the Ace of Wands shows that this step that you need to take is in your fortune. Yes, so new beginnings I'm, are coming, as Karen says. I, I'm just sitting here, um, Karen, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, she's got such a, you know, a queen of um, knives energy, right? So I'm like, oh, I'll just turn the next card over and look what you got, love. The Queen of Knives. So the Queen of Knives. So 
this just confirms my feelings for you. I feel that you're a very intelligent person, very perceptive, and you're no bullshit, but you do get caught up in your mind. You overanalyze stuff and, you know, it's like, am I doing this right? Should I be doing this? You know, you get yourself that in order. That makes sense to why I found and grabbed the runestone of the sun and energy and forces. You are quite the force to be reckoned with, and because you're the force that reckons, you also reckon yourself. Yeah. Don't be afraid to reach out for someone to clarify stuff because I think that might help you a little bit because the Queen of Knives can be someone that, you know, listens to others, is a mentor, gives advice, cuts through the crap. So you need someone that that's just as blunt. People. You know, you need, you need someone to be blunt with you, you know, and just be like, no bullshit, because I think that will help you. So And I feel without being rude, you need to accept it. They're telling you something and they've told you it before and they're going to tell it to you again and you need to sit there and accept it. You're, and, you know, you're so freaking wise. Like, you've got the crow sitting over you. You've got this wisdom, you know, so trust that. But, you know, sometimes we need to hear, hear it from someone else as well, you know. But, yeah, don't get caught up in your head. Don't overanalyze it and be particular about it. <laughs> You got, a good sense yeah, so, humor, you got a good sense of humor. Sorry. Absolutely. So I hope that resonates with you, Karen. So we'll now move on to our next reading so that we don't go over our, our time allotment because we've still got three more people to read for. And then the next person in line is actually Becky. So I'll let you start with Becky. Becky is Alex's sister, and she also is the other reason I am standing here in front of all of you today and going live with you as well. All right, Becky, 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 Becky. Right, I love that name, Becky. I like that. Um, all right, so Becky, Becky. And she's an Aries. Whoa. Oh, okay. Aries. <laughs> right. Um, that just gives gives it away. So now I can read you from a. Um. All right. <laughs> I reckon. I reckon Becky would love. I reckon Beck. Aries are big softies, you know, they probably don't admit it, but Aries are such Oh, big she softies. is. She is. You know? So I reckon Aries probably might need a bit of an oracle card, I reckon. So oh, Becky, Becky, there is I can actually feel some people Becky is, is actually around. the lovely lady who gave me this deck right here that I use every no, single day. You know. I have a habit of accidentally insulting Aries because I've encountered a couple of stubborn ones that I don't agree with. But, you know, I, there's a lot of Aries that I do actually love. She is amazing, but she is very stubborn. Yeah. Um, there's someone around in spirit, Becky. There's a gentleman in spirit, like a grandfather or a father energy. I don't know. There's just a male energy. And he wa wants you to support yourself a little bit better or you support yourself i don't that's just a quick hi pippy i don't want to go how are you much. my lioness okie dokie yeah, sorry i, I totally I'm definitely getting that as well because I've got the three of cups, which goes this, this card here is a great card of friendships and ceremonies for me. And I definitely am feeling the same masculine energy that you're describing. That's definitely around you right now. And the card of judgment is also reversed showing me that they're there to assist you and help you and push you on the right path. Cause you're going through a lot right now and that they're, they're here for you just to lean on. So I'll let you continue. Cause you've obviously got something to say. Yeah, to no, fill in I'm because I'm feeling I need to draw more. So continue. Yeah. Um, so I think, you know, Vesta is the goddess of the home and the hearth, and that's one of the cards that you've got, Becky. So this may signal changes in the home or what, you know, there might be something going on in the home. Um, so there might might be need for changes. Maybe you need to go around do a bit of a cleansing, decluttering, you know, create an environment for yourself. I feel like people are constantly in and out of your life. Like I feel like you've got people in your ear all the time and sometimes you get sick of it, but I think you allow them all in and they drive you nuts. So you might even have a big family too that drives you bonkers. Um, oh, absolutely. And that's why the card of judgment is reversed as well. Don't let their judgments dictate your choices because it's not going to help you benefit. And you've got to focus. The angels are telling me, because I've drawn both the Oracle, like my angel cards and tarot for your love. You've got to be steady in your progress. 
And you've got to focus on your service to yourself because you can't move forward steadily unless you're actually focusing on yourself. And you tend to not do that because you put everybody else before you. And I understand with everything that you're going through right now, it's very hard. I think you can overwhelm yourself. You know, I think you tend to do, you know, so it's like, I really feel there's this, there's this being in spirit that's sort of saying, you know, take your time, be patient, you know, um, yeah, you've, you, you, you've had some tough experiences through life in your past and I think you've done a really good job. Um, so, you know, don't, don't, don't deem your life. Guilty as charged, she says. Guilty as charged. <laughs> So with that, love, I hope that that's resonated with you. So we're now going to move on to our next read, which is one of our lovely moderators and administrators, Tina Powell, who you can find in the Soul Collective as well and on many other pages. She is an incredible woman, and I'll let you start while I put her timestamps in. Tina, 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 Tina. I like to say the person's name because it helps me to connect with the person's energy. So Tina, 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 turn up. No, sorry, it's not Tina Turner. Sorry. Um, oh, but the energy's so similar. Tina Turner. It's just beautiful. Oh my god, that's my favorite song. Rolling on the river. <laughs> oh, don't get me singing. I'm not going to start singing. Oh, you can start singing. I'm sure everybody here would love that. Tina. Get the energy going. Tina, Tina, Tina. Um, Tina, I um. You have the emperor, and I absolutely adore the emperor in this this tarot deck. He's just a fine piece of vampire, you know. So <laughs> this really like you know. Got quite chiseled like, jawbones too. Oh, absolutely! I love I love a good chiseled jawbone. Um, <laughs> so this is very much you. Have, he definitely has the Aries energy with the emperor, and I really feel that maybe you really need to assert a little bit more and you know this is your kingdom you're absolutely queen. because you know, i got the queen. world i yeah. literally drew the world you are right. the queen i also got i was drawn to grab one of my chakra crystals which is the honey calcite honey calcite is all about being happy it's all about joyfulness it's all about being in your own power and just being calm and collected about it as well. You have to find balance because this actually falls into your solar plexus chakra as well. And when your solar plexus is out, I'm definitely feeling a slight solar plexus blockage here. It's showing me that you need to just sit with yourself and relax more. Take some energy of the chamomile if you've got anything near you and just remember that it's calming, it's soothing. And if the reason why I say this is I also drew the death card, which is about letting go of things that are actually holding you back and really rebirth. As you can see here, death is not death. Death is actually one of the most beautiful and favorite cards of my deck. I love this card because it's all about rebirth. It's all about starting and standing in your own power. So as you can see here, you're letting go of your old self here, and this is you releasing what you no longer are required to hold on to. So I feel like you've got something to say to interject with me there. Yeah, no, I... And I, while you say that, I'm just going to quickly get a drink. Like, honestly, like... I, sorry, I've lost track, guys. Sometimes I, I'm on a roll and then I start to, like, disappear. Um, but, you know, the Emperor really has this energy of really sort of reclaiming a sense of power you know, and whatever you do, whatever you do for work, whatever you enjoy to do it, you've got to own it and know that it's yours and reclaim it. You know, it's not just something that is just willy-nilly. The emperor really encourages us to bring that fire. You know, he doesn't allow our emotions to rule our head. So, he, you know, he Very us strong to... masculine energies as well. It's all about yeah. grounding yourself in your own power. Like when yeah, you think of the true. alpha male, it's very much that sort of energy. But you know, upright, he's not like he's not toxic. He's he's he knows what he wants. He can listen and to he's him, going for it. You know, so I really feel that the Emperor is, you know, encouraging you not to allow your emotions to affect your decision making, look at things logically, um, be grounded in your approach. And you know, there's also a message. Are you a reader at all? Do you do any psychic work? She is. So, she, so Tina is a lovely light language worker and she does a lot oh, of readings. Oh, sorry. The message that I want to give for you, right, and I don't know if this is going to resonate with you, but you know sometimes you get people, right, 
they book in for a session, they're really keen and they sit there and they go, oh, well, that didn't make sense or, you know, I don't, you know. So the emperor is basically saying the emperor in you wants to go, okay, that's cool, that's cool. Nice, goodbye. Don't allow that. Don't allow those little mishaps to, to put a damper on your, your spirit, okay. Own your shit, you know. This is your kingdom. They've stepped in. They've asked you. Obviously, they don't resonate. Tough shit. Bye bye. That's it. End exactly. Story. And I'm fe- I'm feeling I'm feeling drawn to pull a rune stone as well for you. Continue with what you're saying. Um. So yeah, just keep rolling on the river like Tina. Rolling on the river. Just rolling, rolling, rolling. And I've drawn the unknowable rune. So it's literally the circle. This this here is telling me that everything is going to work itself out, regardless of what mishap happens. So long as you approach things with a slight masculine aspect in your life, hold power to your actions, let go of the things that aren't holding you back. Everything is going to fall into place. It's going to come in a complete circle. Yes, she absolutely is, Kelly. She is beautiful and amazing. Tina actually was the one that helped with the Cosmic Heart Festival a while back, raising so much funds for this beautiful young girl with cerebral palsy so that she could get life-saving surgery to allow her to walk again. Fabulous. Fabulous. I like that. I like the sound of that. So with that, Tina, I hope that that's resonated with you. And then we're going to move on to our last spot for the night which is our lovely Sienna, Lee Sienna. So I'm going to put your timestamp in and I'll let you start again. Sienna, Sienna, okay. Sienna, Sienna, you're a goddess. Thank you so much, Tina. What did she say? We are incredible. So you are both so wonderful. Thank you both so much. You are both <laughs> wonderful. So, Sienna, you have Sheila Nagik, ancient Irish goddess. I think she's an ancient Irish goddess. So, Sheila Nagik, um, I believe so. She's the goddess of gateways, right? So, whether you're going through changes now or in the future, there's going to be changes. Things are shifting for you, my lovely. So, be open for new opportunities and don't be afraid to step through those gateways, right? And I don't, I, I don't know why this has just come through, come through for me. But don't worry about the clothes that keep going missing. Replace them. Get a whole new wardrobe. Get a whole new wardrobe. Being the being the gateway lord or the gateway goddess, that's also the controller of the fey realms. So oh, those yeah. pixies and those fairies are definitely playing with you. And you know what? Let them have some fun with them too, because life is about to get very fun for you. I'm getting, I haven't drawn any cards. This is just what I had just come straight through to me. That happens every now and then. It's kind of like being a medium. Sometimes this energy will turn us on its head. It's sort of like the tower energy of the tower. It sort of turns everything upside down. So, you know, if we're feeling a little bit unbalanced and things are really all over the place, don't worry, keep going, keep, you know, just keep going. Absolutely. You've got the Eight of Wands, which is the Tarot card of strength. So it's the minor version of the Major Arcana. And it's, it's all about discussions with yourself as well. Have those hard conversations with yourself because you're strong enough now to actually have those conversations within yourself. You've been through what you needed to go through. It unfortunately wasn't very nice because we had the Knight of Wands reversed, showing that there may have been a point in your life that I'm feeling where you were completely thrown to the ground and you felt very weak and very neglected, but you're standing very strong in your own power now, allowing this gateway to open for yourself. (laughs) The Faye High Tina stuff all the time she's saying. What? The Faye hide Tina's things all the time, the little pixies. <laughs> George is not your ADHD because I sometimes feel like it could be a contribution of both for me because I feel like I've been misplacing something and it actually turns out it was me. <laughs> I, just really think, I just put things somewhere. Do you know what? Maybe subconsciously, like, I sabotage myself because I'll put something somewhere and then, like, two hours later, I'm like, oh, where did I put it? I put it somewhere. And the best thing is you put it in a safe spot. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Like put it in the drawer, <laughs> safe spot, and you're like, oh, my God, where is it? So, yeah, don't be afraid to, you know, the gateway, the energy, you know, maybe you need to do something to help renew yourself, you know, write down all the stuff that you want to let go of and burn it so that you can sort of revamp yourself, um, bring in some energy. Hang on, let me clear some of that energy for you. There we go. Let, let me jump in there for you as well. There we go. 
clear all that, we clear out all that bullshit for you, make you feel clear, make you feel light again so that you can remain focused and open and get some direction for yourself. <laughs> As Tina said, I'm just going to put this thing here. And I'm definitely going to remember where it is, but I've never actually put it there and now it's gone. <laughs> I'm hopeless. I, I have a, a, a little hook near my door to put my car keys on because if I put them anywhere else, I won't be able to find them. But yeah, so I'm also getting for you as well that I, so I've been told to draw drawn a motivational card for you. A life of greater joy, power, and satisfaction awaits for those who consciously design your life. So like you were saying with the opening of the gateway and the, and like I was saying with the eight of wands, you are now at that beautiful point in your life to make the changes that you need. You have got all of the power within you and you can do what you know that you need to do. Everything is right there. Your power and your satisfaction awaits those who consciously design their life. And you are consciously designing yours right now, opening the gateways. So, you know, and two, like we, I just pulled another quick card, the three of skulls. This is all about working hard for the money. So you got to put some work in it. you got to work it, get it done, make, make your yep. way. You've got to consciously do it because nothing happens to those who sit in stagnation. The eight of wands shows that and so does the knight of wands. It shows somebody that needs to stand up and get their shit done. Amen. So, so with that... I hope that that's resonated with you and I hope that everybody has enjoyed this live today with our lovely Jake. Uh, how can people get in contact with you? Please feel free just to let everybody know how they can get in contact with you if they ever wish to. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So like I, my page on Facebook, if you're on Facebook guys, is the Aussie Warlock. Okay. And all you got to do is just send me a message, you know, ask if you, if you need a question answered or you just want to, you know, ask anything, just send me a little message. And on Instagram, I'm the Australian Warlock as well. But it's best to contact me through my um, Facebook page because uh, that's where I sort of organise most of my stuff. But don't be afraid to message me on Instagram. The Australian well. Warlock is very much like my Instagram page as well. We, we use it for a little bit of everything. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, yeah, don't be afraid to reach out if you've got questions. Um, yeah, don't be afraid to, to reach out. That's what I'm here for. I'm here to help. Thank you, you so much, Becky. Lisiana says, thank you so, so much. Becky is saying, thank you, Jake. You are amazing as always. You too, Philip. And Tina's just gone, thank you. This was fantastic. So much appreciated. Oh, fabulous. Sending all the, all the love in the world, guys. So did you want to reiterate on the services you do again, just so everyone knows before we go oh, off of this live? Absolutely. So um, one of the main services that I offer is my psychic intuitive readings. Um, they go for $80. Um, you know, usually it's in person. And is that for half an hour or an hour? And do you have a half hour. hour booking as well? Uh, no, I don't have I don't have half an hour. It's just for one hour. Um, but if you have a specific question that you would like answered, I do do specific questions for $45. So that is just a basic question. Um, but, yeah, half the time people just want to book in for full. So I don't have half an hour. So it's either one or nothing. So that's I do half an hour because sometimes people do, like, just quick answers then I can get it out of the way. And then an Absolutely. hour session can really get nitty and gritty. Absolutely. And, you know, sometimes we can work something out. If you've got a question and it's just one question, you want a quick answer, we can work something out as well. You know, I'm, I'm pretty cool like that. So that's pretty cool. Brilliant. So um, with that. Yeah. Is there anything else that you'd like them to know before we jump off? If not, we're going to say goodbye to everybody. So I'll let you finish this. No, that, that's it. I think that's all people need to know. And if they've got any more questions, they can just contact me. Um, yeah. Oh, you did say earlier that you do also offer house cleansings and stuff like oh, that as yeah, well. So did you want to reiterate on that quickly before yeah, we go? So, so if people want to um, book in a house cleansing, um, they go for an hour. It's very intensive. I charge 150 for the full house cleansing. Um, because I go in depth, even the even the rooms that don't need it. So you get a full, um, full blessing, full ritual. Uh, yeah, awesome. So if you've got, even if it's just a blessing for the house, if there's nothing in there, you know, you don't even have any ghosts or whatever, we'll just honor the spirits of your house and bring that good mojo back. Having brilliant. So with that, thank you so much for joining us, Jake. The Australian Warlock here, you can find him both on Facebook and Instagram. I'll get him to send through all of his details again. 
and I will put in the comments how to get in contact with him. And if anybody would like to get in contact with me, I offer one-on-one -on -one readings, half hour for $40. And I also offer an hour session for 80. And if you want to know more about it, please message me. You can find me on Solomon's Cove on Facebook. You can find me on Instagram, on Philip Altman. Everything is under my name, which makes it nice and easy for you to find me. I will also attach my link tree for everybody else later. But thank you all so, so, so much for joining us now. And then we're going to jump off now and we will speak to you, all of you beautiful souls soon. Bye for now. Thanks, it be.